In 2018, the Infectious Disease Society of America and the Society for Healthcare Epidemiologists of America updated their guidelines for the diagnosis and treatment of C. difficile. Guidelines are documents that review the recent literature and make expert recommendations based upon the most recent data available. This was updated for C. difficile as stated in 2018. Within these guidelines, there was a significant shift in the recommendations for treatment of this infection. Prior, the recommendation was to use either metronidazole and vancomycin. Metronidazole was largely removed from these guidelines in 2018. The 2018 guidelines recommended using the white blood cell count and the creatinine as measurements of severity. The white cell count being a measurement of inflammation within the system and the creatinine being a measurement of the kidney function. If two thresholds were not met, the patient was assumed to have non-severe infection. If an individual has a white cell count less than 15,000 or a creatinine less than 1.5 milligrams per deciliter, they have non-severe C. difficile according to these guidelines. And those individuals are recommended to either receive vancomycin 125 milligrams orally four times daily for 10 days or fidaxomycin 200 milligrams twice daily for 10 days. If neither of these antimicrobials are available, metronidazole is recommended to be used. For patients that have severe infection with either a white cell count greater than 15,000 or a creatinine greater than 1.5 milligrams per deciliter, it is recommended that individuals only receive either vancomycin or fidaxomycin. Metronidazole is completely off the table. Based upon these guidelines, it's interesting to understand how clinical practice might have changed. At a major infectious disease conference in Washington, D.C. in October of 2019, Clancy and Wen looked at this specifically. They looked at the IVQA Pharmetrics Plus database of prescriptions from 2013 through the end of 2018. They then looked at changes in the practice prescribing patterns for C. difficile infection. And what they found was really interesting. What they found was that when they compared the year prior to the issuance of the guideline, guidelines versus the year after the guidelines were issued, there was a 45% increase in the usage of vancomycin and a 44% increase in the usage of fidaxomycin, both much more effective therapies for C. difficile than metronidazole. However, if one takes a step back and thinks about this, there was no new data that was presented with the guidelines. The guidelines were just put forward by an expert opinion reviewing the previously published data yet this had a major profound effect on practice. As a result, it is now recommended that guidelines be updated more frequently for disease states that have more frequent literature being published, C. difficile, of course, being one of those. So as a result of this study, we see that patients are being treated much more efficiently and effectively with vancomycin and fidaxomycin as a result of the guidelines being issued. Now, as a patient, it's important to think about what you're being treated with and have an open dialogue with your provider about the reasons why a specific antimicrobial was chosen. For each individual patient, there are medical comorbidities and other factors that go into these decisions. So broadly making statements like I have might not be directly applicable to you, but a good productive conversation with your provider would be an excellent way to make sure that you're receiving the best most effective therapy.